Hello YouTube and welcome to an all new Elder Scrolls lore video. Today we're talking about a creature that we saw once in Daggerfall and then never again, the Nymph. Now looking at Daggerfall's 2D sprites for this creature it's quite um, obvious as to why we've never seen them again since. But still, let's explore what lore there is and try to find a lore friendly way as to why we haven't seen them again. Basically do Bethesda's job for them as um, yeah, essentially they've just retconned them. Let's get on with the video. So the nymphs, elusive creatures if anything, whom we haven't seen since Daggerfall, and with good reason, I mean, look at these sprites. Well. Yeah, they're basically just naked women. But that isn't to say that despite their not-so-child-friendly appearance that they aren't interesting. Anyway, nymphs in the Elder Scrolls universe are viewed in the same fashion that most of us view them. Magical creatures who look like naked women and the stigma among in-universe academics, so on Tamriel, is that they're rare but very promiscuous and fulfill sexual desires for anyone who approaches them. Therefore, the in-universe academic scene on these creatures is not very broad as most in-universe scholars view the nymph as a creature not really worth for research and all documentation the people on Tamriel themselves really have on them is that of basically borderline pornographic descriptions and crude half-fiction by those who claim to have met a nymph. That said, most of that is proven to be untrue by a man named Vondham Barris, a scholar of the Imperial University who at some point decided to do some research into what nymphs are really like and whether the stereotype that pe the people of Tamriel have on these creatures is accurate or not. Needless to say, he was ridiculed by most of Tamriel's academic community and not many took him seriously. Luckily for us, he wasn't dissuaded by his peers and decided to start researching the nymphs anyway. And his findings are definitely notable. First of all, he started with the language. Nymphs have their own language, something which is a perk to acquire in the Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall. Learning the language of the nymphs means that they won't attack you. This language is said to be very complicated and very hard for the people of Tamriel to learn, as it's very alien and sounds extremely melodiously. But what's very curious about the language is that Vondhem, the researcher, uh, found that it's very similar in sound to the Aeliot language, but that it doesn't share any words with the Aeliot language. The language of the nymphs sound very similar, but is in fact a very different language. This could mean that either the nymphs are far, far, far offspring of the aliens, which I personally find not too likely since their language is so different and alien to the people of Tamriel, while other elvish languages which sort of branched off from the original elvish language are very similar. Look at my video for the elvish languages for that. And we know that the language of nymphs cannot be learned easily by the people of Tamriel, unlike many of the other languages on Tamriel, with the exception of the Argonian language, which is also very hard to learn, as I discussed on my video on that language, uh, which is the Argonian language Gel. I personally suspect that the nymph language is basically its own thing and that it doesn't share any characteristics with other languages on Tamriel, as it's evolved on its own, because it's a completely separate race of creatures. Hence why it's so hard to, to learn for other people of Tamriel, just like the Argonian language, which is so separate from all the other languages that it's very hard to learn for any elf, human or Khajiit on Tamriel. Anyway, back to the nymphs. I personally find it far more likely that the nymphs somehow heard the Aelid language and created their own language through imitation of the sounds of the Aelid language, but then their language themselves being completely different, but just sounds similarly. I think this is because nymphs are very shy and solitary creatures, contrary to what many scholars on Tamriel believed prior to Fontaine Barris' research. They don't mingle with people or elves, or they don't like to be among civilization at all, and they are very wary of humans or elves, not even showing themselves to the people of Tamriel, unless the nymphs have a very solid feeling that they can trust an individual. Meaning that they probably hid themselves, but did hear the aliens and modeled their own language after the same type of sounds. That said, since they are so shy and live in solitary life, nymphs are very, very rare and even more rarely seen in places with a lot of population. There, rather, they often live in very far off places, apparently often close to the coast, even though in Daggerfall they don't seem to be associated with the sea. They often live in caves and grottos, minding their own business completely and shying away from anyone who finds their homes which are usually desolate places with a lot of beautiful nature around it, because nature seems to be the most important bones of their habitats, and they can often be found on 
far off coasts or even deserted tropical islands. Von den Bauers in his research needed to spend three months of patient waiting, bringing small gifts and presents for the nymph and posing himself as a non-threatening individual to Ayalea, which is the nymph that he had located and wanted to get into contact with. Until the nymph, who lived in a cave far off the coast of Hammerfell, would finally show herself to him. And only after addressing her in her own language did she open up to him. He describes the nymph as being beautiful and aesthetically perfect, with her smile and laugh being enchanting, but also found her to be extremely wise and knowledgeable. The nymph seemed to have an unrivaled ability to store information and to understand the nature of things, hence why they seemed to love nature so much. The nymph Ayalea had much knowledge of nature and how nature worked, being able to describe to Fontenberrys her own knowledge of the deep woodland and animal inhabitants. Apparently knowing more and knowing things in greater detail than the Bosmer scholars that uh, our researcher had met. She also taught him of flowers and ghosts and of all the creatures inhabiting Tamriel too small and too timid for mortals to ever see because nymphs live a very long time, perhaps even being immortal as they call humans and elves mortals, meaning that they themselves may be immortal and spend their whole lives learning about nature and everything in their surroundings. Fondenberis describes that Ayalea taught him how to learn again for the very first time of how to open his mind to all the possibilities of life and not having himself be limited by his own way of thinking. He ends his research by giving the recommendation to anyone who would ever see a nymph to speak to her, as you could learn a lot. Now, the funny thing here is that his research ends with a note from the Imperial University saying, and I quote, Editor's note. The writer, von Zumbaris, is no longer a scholar at the Imperial University. He deposited this manuscript and disappeared from the civilized world. His current whereabouts are unknown. Yeah, this uh, probably means that he went to live with the nymph and hopelessly fell in love like the stigma around nymphs ifs. That said, it is actually not recommended to speak to a nymph without preparations like the ones that von den Bauers took. If you don't know their language and are not extremely careful, nymphs are very dangerous creatures as they can only be hurt with silver weapons or better. And they are resistant to paralysis and poison and are able to cast spells that can make you fall asleep and drain your energy. Anyway, so what happened to the nymphs? The simple answer is Bethesda just retconned them, but let's not be that simple. First of all, I have my own theory as to why we haven't seen them since Daggerfall in any of the mainline games, because I think that after Von den Baris's research, people might have actually turned their head to the value of nymphs, especially since their hair in Daggerfall has alchemical properties. Meaning that the nymphs may have been hunted down for both their knowledge, their hair, and um, yeah, let's call it personal satisfaction. While that isn't too likely, nymph hunts could explain why we can't easily find them anymore in the remaining uh, mainline games and that the remaining nymphs isolated themselves even more from away from any place where no player could ever find them. But then there's the mystery of the Elder Scrolls Online. Why don't we see them there centuries before Daggerfall and centuries before Von den Baris's research? Well, my friend Nerdragon theorized that perhaps during the second era there weren't as many nymphs as in the third era and that perhaps some type of event happened which caused them to procreate more, meaning that they became less rare and thus they were seen more often around the time of Daggerfall, meaning well, during the time of the Elder Scrolls Online they are so rare that we don't see them anywhere, or perhaps we will see them in the next chapter as we're apparently going to some mysterious faraway islands, so yeah, maybe we'll see them. Another theory is by the reddit user named happyb3. He theorized that the nymphs may be linked to the Nereids, which we talked about in my video on sea creatures of Tamriel. This could mean that Bethesda went for the Nereids to sort of replace the nymphs in the lore, and if you really want to explain it from a lore angle, I'd say that the Nereids are the original nymphs, but that some of the Nereids may have evolved into the nymphs or something like that, since the two creatures definitely share some characteristics. But I'm not too sure. I think that in the end, if there's a lore explanation as to why we haven't seen the nymphs since Daggerfall, it will probably either be revealed in another Elder Scrolls Online expansion, like the one that we apparently get soon, or of course in the Elder Scrolls 6, uh, which will probably take place in Hammerfall, where we know nymphs have lived. And hey, who knows, maybe we'll even see a live nymph in either the Elder Scrolls 6 or in a new Elder Scrolls Online expansion. One can only dream. That said, thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to return for the next Elder Scrolls lore video. And as always, before I end things, allow me to vocally mention my top Patreon supporters. Mr. Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Athena Iotis, Doji, Polaris Poutine, Sar Mikael, Sort of Bushido and Mr. Christmas. These amazing people, along with all the others on screen, keep this channel alive. And for that, I am very grateful. That said, I will see you all next time in the next Elder Scrolls lore video. Bye-bye.